Today on Sports Central, we'll be going over our second mock draft of this 2020 offseason. And of course, we've already done one. I'll be tagging that in this video. But nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and get started with our second mock draft of this 2020 offseason by going over the first pick in this draft from the Cincinnati Bengals. And they're going to be picking up Joe Burrow from LSU. And quite honestly, I'm, I mean, I've tried to look over a different player that could take this number one position from Joe Burrow. Uh, but I think Burrow is pretty solidified here. Of course, looking at his 2019 stats, 5,600 passes yards 60 touchdowns and six interceptions and let me remind you he actually had over 6,000 yards of total offense last season and for the Bengals a team that needs a quarterback desperately if they're going to even have a winning season uh, yeah Joe Burrow is going to be the perfect guy for them to get in my opinion and of course I think like especially with him once again putting up over 5,600 yards it'll be interesting to see how he translates to the NFL uh, but I think he'll be just fine Joe Burrow is going to the Cincinnati Bengals at number one number two is going to be the Washington Redskins taking Chase Young and he's from Ohio State and he is an edge going to be the first edge to go in this draft of course and Ohio State really has produced a lot of great defenders in the past few years if you look at the Bosa or yeah Nick Bosa from last season I mean they've produced a lot of great players for sure and I think Chase Young is going to be another big addition to that 2019 stats for him 46 total tackles and 16 and a half sacks that is a crazy number nearly 17 sacks uh, for Chase Young last season and considering the Redskins do not have a defensive line at all um, and their defense was absolutely horrendous last season. I think Chase Young would be a really good addition for the Redskins. That's why I've got him going number two. Number three is the Detroit Lions taking Jeff Okuda from Ohio State, and he is a cornerback. And I've seen mixed uh, mixed feelings about Jeff Okuda, but I think he's going to go to the Lions. Uh, I had I had him at number three going to the Lions as well in my first draft. Um, nonetheless, 2019 stats for him: 34 total tackles, three interceptions and one forced fumble so really uh quite honestly yeah the lions being a team that had an absolutely horrendous secondary last season getting jeff okuda would be huge in my opinion for this team number four new york giants they're going to take up isaiah simmons from clemson he's a linebacker and i think we're going to be seeing a lot of defensive players going in the first uh few picks of this draft of course the giants are another team that had an absolutely terrible defense last season and with isaiah simmons being a linebacker who had 104 total tackles, eight sacks, three interceptions, and two forced fumbles. Uh, quite honestly, it wouldn't surprise me a single bit to see him going to the Giants, but I also could see the Giants picking up an offensive tackle too. Of course, that offensive line for the Giants is uh, pretty terrible as well. And if if uh, if this Giants team is going to be successful at all, they definitely need an offensive line to protect Daniel Jones and give him uh, some protection for sure. Nonetheless, number five is going to be the Miami Dolphins. This is their first of three first round picks that they've got in this draft. Uh, but they're going to select Andrew Thomas, in my opinion. He's a uh, offensive tackle from Georgia. Going to be the first offensive lineman to go in this draft. And quite frankly, just to put it up straight, the Dolphins need a offensive line next season. Uh, and I think the Dolphins have a ton of potential next year. I mean, if you look at um, that talent coming in and also looking at how they've got three first-round draft picks and how, how they improved over 2019, I think this Dolphins team has got a ton of potential. And Andrew Thomas... Uh, getting an offensive tackle from Georgia, which he was excellent if you watched him. I think that he's going to, I think he's going to do a great job with Miami. And I think he's going to considerably um, improve this Dolphins offensive line. Of course, whoever quarterback they've got down there next season really needs protection. And I think it starts with Andrew Thomas. Number six is going to be the Los Angeles Chargers. And of course, they're going to select Tua Tago Viola. And of course, if you watched my first mock draft, I actually had Tua going uh, much further down. Uh, because of his in injuries and stuff like that. I just didn't think that Tua would be going as high up, but I'm going to actually put him at number six in this one. Uh, he's from Alabama, quarterback, of course. Once again, he was injured, and his injuries kind of, uh, it kind of concerned me a little bit. Of course, he seems like a quarterback that could um, be a bit injury prone, and hopefully he won't be for the Chargers. But in 2019, even though he wasn't, or when he did play for the part of the season, he put up over 2,800 yards, 33 touchdowns, and three interceptions. And that is a crazy touchdown to interception ratio, 33 to three. Um, that's absolutely insane. I think the Chargers being a, or being a team that got rid of Phillip Rivers this offseason, I think that Tua would be a great pickup for them. And it wouldn't surprise me either to see the Chargers trade up. I mean, they may be concerned that a team in front of them might take Tua. And so I think that it's a possibility that the Chargers trade up uh, possibly to that number three pick. They trade with the Lions. Uh, who knows? But I think that, yeah, they're going to pick up two in this first round. 
Number seven will be the Carolina Panthers. Very disappointing team in the 2019 season, only going 5-11. And, and they're going to select Derek Brown from Auburn. He's a defensive tackle, and he's going to be the first defensive tackle to go or yeah, in, this, in this draft. And his 2019 stats were excellent as well. 54 total tackles, four sacks, and two forced fumbles. So uh, quite honestly, I also had Derek Brown going to Carolina in my first mock draft. And Carolina is going to be in a big rebuild season next year, in my opinion. I think Derek Brown would be great, um, great to have on this defensive line, which this defensive line was absolutely horrendous last season, one of the worst in the league. And so having Derek Brown on the defensive tackle would certainly be a huge addition to this team. Number eight is going to be the Arizona Cardinals getting McKee Becton, and he's an offensive tackle from Louisville, going to be. Yeah, and of course, he, the Cardinals lose two offensive tackles to free agency this offseason. So picking up McKee Becton really, I think, will be a huge help to this team. And quite honestly, I mean, it just depends on which offensive lineman they're going to take. I mean, you could you could name off two or three guys that they could pick up um, at the offensive tackle position. Uh, but quite honestly, I'm pretty confident that the Cardinals will take an offensive lineman in this first round. Uh, it just depends on who. Cardinals 2019 record was 5 and 10 and 1. Looking at our number 9, it's going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars taking Javon Kinlaw, and he is from South Carolina and is a defensive tackle. And quite honestly, Jacksonville has more significant needs than the interior of their defensive line. Uh, but quite honestly, Kinlaw is going to be hard for them to pass up here, uh, considering, I mean, I could see him. Javon Kinlock totally going uh, before pick number nine. Uh, but I think with him being left at this at this point of uh, the draft, I think the Jaguars will take him up. 2019 stats, 35 tackles and six sacks. The Jaguars 2019 record was six and 10. Looking at our number 10 pick, the Cleveland Browns, or they're going to be taking Jidrick Mills or Wills Jr. And of course the Browns will do anything but address the offensive line in this spot. Uh, like they they have to get something on the offensive line. I mean Baker Mayfield was just under pressure all the time last season. And if this Browns team is going to succeed, they really need some protection for Baker Mayfield. Like I think he's a great quarterback. Mayfield, uh, we saw that in 2018 for a good chunk of the year. And he was a bit of a disappointment in 2019, I think we all can say. Uh, but a big chunk of that is because of the offensive line. So if they can pick up Jedrick Wills, that's going to be huge for this Browns team. And I think that they've got a chance, if they can get a good offensive line, I think they've got a good chance of making the playoffs. Number 11 is going to be the New York Jets taking A.J. Espenza. And he's from Iowa and is the edge. And I had him going much, much lower in my first mock draft. Uh, but I'm going to raise him up for this one. I think that he's got a ton of potential. And looking at his 2019 stats, 49 tackles, 11 and a half sacks, and four forced fumbles. Uh, no doubt that he's going to be a really great player. And I think for the Jets being a team uh, that really needs a defensive line, I think he'd be a great player to start off with. Number 12 is going to be the Oakland Raiders, and they're going to pick up C.D. Lamb. And, uh, of course, he's from Oklahoma and is a wide receiver. And I think that he's going to be the top wide receiver to go in this draft. I actually had him going at number four in my first mock draft. I had a ton of confidence in him, and I really still do. Uh, but I think the Raiders at this point, I mean, who knows who Las Vegas' quarterback is going to be next season. Uh, but quite honestly, whoever it is, he's going to need some weapons. And I think CeeDee Lamb would be a great wide receiver to start off with. And of course, last season, it looked like they are going to have a really good wide receiver core uh, with Antonio Brown leading it. But of course, then he got into some trouble. So uh, yeah, having CeeDee Lamb next season, I think, will be a huge help for the Las, or, yeah, the Las Vegas Raiders. And of course, 2019 stats, 42 receptions, 1,300 yards. And 15 touchdowns. Raiders 2019 record was 7 and 9. Number 13 is going to be the Indianapolis Colts, and they're going to pick up Justin Herbert from Oregon. And Justin Herbert was another guy that I had much higher in my first mock draft. I actually had him going before Tua, and it wouldn't surprise me a single bit to see uh, the Chargers pick up Tua or Justin Herbert instead of Tua. Uh, but whichever quarterback is left after the Chargers pick up a quarterback it will likely be going to the Indianapolis Colts. Of course, they have Jacoby Brissett, uh, but I think that they need a, they need an actual quarterback and that I think that they can really build on. And I think Justin Herbert is the perfect guy to do that. Of course, he'll be the third quarterback to go in this draft. 2019 stats, 3,400 yards as well as 32, yard, or 32 uh, touchdowns and six interceptions. And the Colts 2019 record was 7-9. and nine. So overall, yeah, for the Colts, this would be a great guy uh, to build up on. And I also wouldn't be surprised to see them take Jacob Eason. I mean, who knows? I mean, Eason's also a great quarterback, no doubt about it. Uh, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be really interesting to see who the Colts take in this situation. 
Number 14 will be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I've got this team picking up Jacob Eason, and he's going to be the fourth quarterback to go in this draft. He's from Washington, and he is a quarterback, 2019 stats, 3,100 yards of passing, as well as 23 touchdowns and eight interceptions. And of course, I mean, he's done really well over his career, and he had a little bit of a disappointing season in 2019. I mean, over 3,000 yards is great. Uh, but if he's going to succeed in the NFL, he's got to lower that interception rate. I mean, 23 to 8 is good, but that's not really a big NFL level. So, and concerning Hughes at Washington and stuff, he's yeah, he will need to lower that number a bit. Now, those Buccaneers 2019 record was 7 and 9, and picking up Jacob Eason would be huge. Of course, Jameis Winston won't be around likely in Tampa next season, so Jacob Eason would be a really big pickup in my opinion. Number 15 will be the Denver Broncos, and this team is going to pick up Tristan Wirfs. He is from Iowa, will be the second player from Iowa to go in this draft, and he is an offensive tackle. And quite honestly, to put it up straight, Denver needs offensive linemen help if they, if any quarterback under center will be succeeding for this team. And I mean, we've seen, or we saw a lot last season, whichever quarterback uh, was playing, no matter whether it's Drew Locke or Joe Flacco. I mean, their offensive line was absolutely terrible. And so picking up Tristan Wirfs would be a huge help for this team, no doubt about it. And I think it gives their quarterback a lot of potential if they can pick up Wirfs at this point in the draft. Number 16 is going to be the Atlanta Falcons, and they're going to pick up Kristen Fulton. And he is from LSU and is a cornerback, going to be the second corner to go in this draft. And looking at his 2019 stats, 38 tackles and one interception, not all that impressive. Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, no doubt that uh, the Atlanta Falcons need a good pass rush right now. And I think that, or a good secondary right now, and Kristen Fulton being uh, a really great quarterback from LSU is going to do a really great job of that. Falcons 2019 record was 7-9. and nine. Number 17 is going to be the Dallas Cowboys. And I think they're going to pick up Grant Delpit. I actually had Delpit going uh, much, much later in my first mock draft. But I'm, I've got him going at number 17 in this one. He's from LSU and is a safety. Going to be the first safety to go in this draft. 2019 stats for him. 65 tackles, 2 sacks, 2 interceptions, and 2 forced fumbles. Uh, but quite honestly, I mean, you've got a couple really good safeties in this draft. The other one being Xavier McKinney, which I had Xavier McKinney going at this spot. Um, in the last draft, and I actually had Grant Delpit going to San Francisco, which is probably going to be the other team to take a safety. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Grant Delpit, I mean, you could go either way. One of those two guys, though, will be going to Dallas, and the other one will be going to San Francisco, very likely. But the Cowboys 2019 record was 8-8. Eight and eight. Uh, So yeah, once again, picking up another great player for their secondary would be huge for the Cowboys in this situation. Number 18 is going to be the Miami Dolphins' second first-round pick, and this time they're going to pick up Colvon Chasen. College is going to be, or his college was LSU, and he was an edge. Going to be the third edge to go in this draft, and his 2019 stats were, were exceptionally great. 60 tackles, six and a half sacks, and one forced fumble. And quite honestly, I mean, yeah, if you if you looked at the pattern already, we've actually had three straight LSU players going. And quite honestly, it just shows how great LSU's class was last season. Uh, but yeah, Clavon Chasen is going to be going for the Dolphins in this pick. Once again, Dolphins 2019 record was 5 and 11. Number 19 is going to be the Oakland Raiders again, and this time they're going to pick up C.J. Henderson, College's Florida, and his position is a cornerback, going to be the third corner to go in this draft. 2019 stats for him, 33 tackles and one sack. And quite honestly, I mean, the Raiders really need some big improvements in their secondary as well, and really the defense in general needs a lot of great players, and I think they're going to pick up C.J. Henderson in this situation. And um, yeah, once again, if they can pick him up, I think the Raiders' secondary will drastically improve in 2020. Number 20 is going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they're going to pick up Patrick Queen, another LSU player, and he's a linebacker. And of course, his 2019 stats, 85 tackles, 3 sacks, and 1 interception, so he had a really good 2019 season. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised uh, to see Patrick Queen go in this situation. I think I also had him going at number 20, the Jaguars, in my first mock draft as well. Number 21 is going to be the Philadelphia Eagles picking up Jerry Judy from Alabama, and he is a wide receiver, going to be the second receiver to go in this draft. 2019 stats, 1,100 yards and 10 touchdowns. So, uh, But quite honestly, the Eagles could also pick up Henry Ruggs, in my opinion, at this position. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Henry Ruggs go at all um, in this in this position. But yeah, Jerry Judy, I've got going at 21 right now. Um, but I mean, once again, I'm pretty confident that the Philadelphia Eagles will be taking a wide receiver 
receiver at 21 in this draft. Eagles 2019 record was 9 and 7. Number 22 is going to be the Buffalo Bills. And outside, you're either gross going at number 22 in my last mock draft, College Penn State. He's an edge, going to be the third edge to go in this draft. In his 2019 stats, 40 tackles, 9 sacks, and the Bills 2019 record was 10 and 6. And quite honestly, the Bills were probably one of the biggest surprises of 2019 for me. I mean, 10 and 6 was really a big push um, for them. And quite honestly, they had a really good chance of making or going far in the playoffs too, if you consider. I mean, it was very impressive. Uh, but nonetheless, number 23 is going to be the uh, yeah the New England Patriots, and I think they're going to trade up with the Miami Dolphins. And their original pick was 26, but they're going to move up to 23 to get Cole Komet from Notre Dame, and he's a tight end, going to be the only tight end going in this first round. And his 2019 stats were exceptionally great: 43 receptions for 550 yards and six touchdowns, as well as that. So. And considering the Patriots, ever since they got rid of Rob Gronkowski, or actually they didn't get rid of him, he just retired. Uh, but yeah, they, they considerably struggled last season. I mean, you gotta and you gotta consider how big that tight end was to this team. And I, I think picking up Cole Komet would be a huge addition here, and it really it really just kind of uh, helped this offense, no doubt about it. And whichever quarterback will be taking over for New England next season, since Tom Brady is leaving. Number 24 is going to be the New Orleans Saints picking up Henry Ruggs III. And once again, I would not be surprised to see Henry Ruggs going to Philadelphia here. Uh, but I've got, um, if Henry Ruggs does go to Philadelphia, I can easily expect Jerry Judy to go to the New Orleans Saints if he makes it that far. Uh, but yeah, 2019 stats for Henry Ruggs, 40 receptions for 821 yards and eight touchdowns. Uh, but yeah, once again, it wouldn't surprise me a single bit uh, to see Jerry Judy going to the Saints if he gets left over. Uh, from the Philadelphia Eagles and for every other team that's ahead of the Saints. Saints 2019 record was 13 and 3 and quite honestly picking up Henry Ruggs uh, would be a huge addition to this wide receiver core. Of course they've already got Michael Thomas and Ted Ginn but the thing is though Ted Ginn's getting kind of old and I think having Henry Ruggs in there to kind of replace uh, Ted Ginn's rule in this Saints receiving core would be huge and especially for Drew Brees next season. I mean he's going to be a uh, he's going to be a really great player for them no doubt about it. Number 25 is going to be the Minnesota Vikings and they're going to be taking Trevon Diggs and I also had them taking Trevon Diggs in my first mock draft too. College's Alabama position is a cornerback, going to be the second cornerback to go in this draft. And 2019 stats, 37 tackles and three interceptions. So he had a really good season as well. And quite honestly, I've seen a lot of different opinions on Trevon Diggs, uh, but I think that the Vikings really need to improve their secondary. Uh, of course, that's probably, I'd say, the top or the second top position that they really need to improve on. Vikings 2019 record was 10 and six. Number 26 is going to be the Miami Dolphins and their uh, their third first round draft pick. Of course, they traded with the New England Patriots, uh, so that shoved them down to 26. I think they're going to pick up Jordan Love, the fifth quarterback to go in this draft, and he's from Utah State, and he's going to be... Um, I think he's got a lot of potential, but the thing is, though, his stats do concern me a bit. I mean, he had 3,400 yards of passing, which is certainly very impressive, but he also had 20 touchdowns and 17 interceptions. That is certainly concerning to me, uh, that touchdown-to-interception ratio, and considering he's at Utah State as well, which that is not a Power 5 conference. I mean, they're in the Mountain West, um, so that, that does concern me there, 17 interceptions. Uh, but I think for the Dolphins, if they can pick up a quarterback, and Jordan Love, I think he's got a lot of potential, and who knows, uh, he could be a great quarterback. We'll have to see. Uh, but yeah, that's all up in the air right now. Dolphins 2019 record. We're looking ahead to our number 27 pick, it's going to be the Seattle Seahawks taking Terrell Lewis. He's from Alabama and will be the fourth edge to go in this draft. And of course, for the Seattle Seahawks, no matter whether they keep Clowney or not, uh, I think that Lewis would be a great player to pick up. And they de- they generally need a better pass rush as well. I mean, they've got one of the uh, more mediocre pass rushes in the entire NFL. So picking up Trell Lewis would be a huge addition for them. 2019 stats for Lewis, 31 tackles and six sacks, and the Seahawks 2019 record was 11 and five. Looking at number 28, it's going to be the Baltimore Ravens picking up Kenneth Murray from Alabama, or from Oklahoma, my bad. His position is a linebacker, and he's going to be the second linebacker to go in this draft. And for the Ravens, being a team that was extremely talented in 2019, it was the linebackers core that really was the big hit for them. And I think picking up Kenneth Murray would be a huge addition for them, and it'd really make this defense even more dangerous. Uh, Once again, 2019 stats, 102 tackles and 4 sacks. Ravens 2019 record was 14-2. Of course, they had the best regular season record 
um, in the entire NFL. Number 29 is going to be the Tennessee Titans, and they're going to picking or they're going to pick up Neville Gallimore. And he was not in my mock draft last or for my first mock draft. I actually had him going in the second round, uh, but he's going in the first round for this one. He's from Oklahoma and is a defensive lineman. Of course, he's the, going to be the third um, to go. And then the 2019 sets for him: 20, 29 tackles and two forced fumbles. And the Titans, quite honestly, were a huge surprise from the last season. Not quite in the regular season. Of course, they only went 9-7 and seven in the regular season. And they went really far in the playoffs all the way to the AFC Championship game where they played Kansas City. Uh, but once again, yeah, I think the Titans picking up Neville Gallimore would be a huge help for their defensive line. Number 30 is going to be the Green Bay Packers. And this time, they're going to pick up a wide receiver. They're going to be picking up K.J. Hamler from Penn State, of course, in 29 he had 56 receptions for 947 yards and eight touchdowns and quite honestly for Aaron Rodgers he's got a lot of great weapons right now of course he's got Devontae Adams um, Allison he's got a couple of good wide receivers but I think picking up another one in KJ Hamler would be huge uh, no doubt about it for Green Bay and I think for Aaron Rodgers I mean considering he's I mean the, the Bikers could also go with an offensive lineman here but quite honestly their offensive line was actually really improved in the 2019 season no doubt about it so if if the offensive line can continue to improve, I think you should work on your wide receiver core. And so I, I think that's what they're going to do here. And once again, the Packers 2019 record, 13-3. and three. They were a bit of a surprise last season as well. Number 31 pick is going to be the San Francisco 49ers. And they're going to take Xavier McKinney in this situation. He's from Alabama and is a safety. Going to be the second safety to go in this draft. And of course, this could be swapped in between Grant Delpit or Xavier McKinney. Of course, if Grant Delpit goes to Dallas, um, I think that the Niners pick up McKinney in this situation. Uh, but I think if the Dallas Cowboys end up going with Xavier McKinney, I think that the Niners will get Grant Delpit, which I did have the Niners getting Grant Delpit in my first uh, mock draft. But I've got McKinney going in my second one to the Niners. Um, 2019 stats for him, 95 total tackles, 3 sacks, and 4 forced fumbles. Niners 2019 record once again was 13 and 3. They made it to the Super Bowl. Another huge surprise team of 2019. And lastly, your 32nd pick and the last pick of the first round of this draft uh, will be the Kansas City Chiefs taking up Jeff Gladney. He's from TCU and is a cornerback, going to be the third cornerback to go in this draft. And quite honestly, I mean, he's a really great player. And the Chiefs, uh, they've got a good secondary, but they don't have quite a secondary that is Super Bowl level. And I think picking up Jeff Gladney would be a huge addition for them. 2019 stats for him, 31 tackles, one sack, and one interception. Once again, the Chiefs' 2019 record was 12-4. and four. So, uh, yeah, picking up Jeff Gladney could possibly make the Chiefs make another Super Bowl appearance. So, I mean, I mean, who knows? I mean, this, this Chiefs' secondary was probably the worst part of this team last season. But nonetheless, that about wraps up our second mock draft of the 2020 offseason. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on this. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for or yeah, thanks for sticking by as well. Uh, show some support if you'd like to. Thanks for sticking around once again, and I will see you all later.